morning. morning. That's good. Let's warm up. That was a test to my microphone. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. That's good. Um, we are welcome to the presence of God this morning as a family of faith. We have come to worship. And I want to encourage us to focus our minds and don't let them wander away. The Holy Spirit is here with us, and he would want to speak to us. Just open your minds right from the call to worship, the songs, the scripture reading, the announcements, the prayers. God will speak to you in one way or the other. So just be attentive and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, even as we continue to worship together. And having said that, uh, I will invite us to be in a standing position if we are to, I mean, if we are able to stand so that we can sing. This one, we're not singing the call to worship. I thought we we're chanting it. No, but we're not. All right. As Jesus began his earthly ministry, he said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Through the Holy Spirit, we too have been anointed to be the hands and feet of Jesus. May we bring good news to the poor as ministers of Jesus Christ. Come, let us worship the Lord. Amen. Let's bow our heads together. I want us to focus ourselves on Jesus Christ this morning. And as we look up onto Jesus, let's listen to the Holy Spirit speak to us. What is it that keeps you awake at night? What is it that is happening around the world that scares you? As we worship, I want you to say this to Christ, say this to God, that you're inviting his presence to take control of that situation or that condition or that person. Speak to God. Tell him that you are here to listen to him. Let him prepare you and let him speak to you. And so, Lord, together as your people, we are here. We know your presence is eminent in our midst. You are with us everywhere. Even this morning as we worship, speak to us, O Lord. Touch our hearts. Take away the burdens, O Lord, that keeps us from hearing you. And you speak to us and take the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We continue to stand as we take the first
You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to Sunday worship service. There are attendance pads on the hooks in your pew. Please sign it and pass it down. For those watching the service on Zoom, please put the number of people who are watching the service with you. If you have a prayer request, please fill out a prayer card and pass it to the end of the pew and ushers will pick them up during the first hymn. The beautiful flowers on the altar are given by Phyllis Simpson. The 2022 Lenten luncheon schedule is posted on the bulletin board in the narthex. The administrative council meeting will be this Thursday, March 24th at 7 p.m. April potluck will be April 3rd and will be a free for all. Clipboards will be passed around. Dana and Liz Daniels will be living short term in Goodyear, Arizona as Dana will be receiving chemotherapy for the next couple months. Continue to pray for Dana and his family. If you wish to send an encouragement, their address is Dana Daniels, 1499 North 159th Avenue, number 1116, Goodyear, Arizona, 85395. His address is also on the back of, yes, it is on the back here too. Freezer meals are available for delivery for those who are in need, who are sick or other meal needs. If you know someone, excuse me, if you know of someone who is in need of a freezer meal, please call the church office at 762-3434 or Don Butcher at 760-8986. If you have any prayer requests or concerns, call the church office or message us on our Facebook page. Thank you. Uh, let's continue to be in prayer for Marilyn Ireland's sister-in-law, Maggie Deal, as she battles cancer. And uh, as it has been announced, let's continue to pray for Donna Daniels. Uh, he, um, he, he is in Arizona receiving radiation treatment. And I want us to thank God for Mike Kaj's um, surgery. And let's pray for continuous healing as he um, looks forward to getting better and getting back to work. Uh, as you may notice, um, Merrily is not here today. She is in Swedish Medical Center in Denver. Um, it was, we, I mean, we announced that she had some ear infection. It's discovered that she has a syndrome that is affecting or fighting her nervous system. So they, they are calming down the nerves and trying to help her with therapy to see how she can begin to recover from that. So please continue to pray for Marily DeBosk. Her address is in the office. You can call the office if you want to send her a card and get uh, the address so that... Um, she can know that we are praying for her. In fact, this morning, she uh, sent me a text to thank all the congregation for their prayers. Uh, it could have been worse than what we were seeing, but uh, God intervened at the right time, and she's receiving uh, very good care. Let's thank God for Jane Krause's uh, procedure also, uh, her surgery, and let's pray for healing. Um, she, she needs to heal, but her voice sounds just like the Jane you know. She is doing okay, and she's improving well. Let's pray for her. And let's also pray for Brian Lundy uh, as he suffered a stroke. And uh, this is a request that I want to pass to us that you think and prayerfully, if you can help, uh, we just discovered that the handy bus will not be running. Uh, on Sundays, okay? So, and we have our dear friend, our brother, Larry, here uh, that comes to church every Sunday using the handy bus. 
Uh, Larry will want to be in church, even though I have not talked to him about that. Right, Larry? You want to be in church, right? Yes, he's shaking his head. Yeah. Now, we would want people that will volunteer on Sunday morning, or if you can just come early, or you just go, as you're coming, you go through his place and bring him to church with you. That would be very helpful. Um, we'll get his address and phone number so that we have it in the office uh, ready for you to, to call him if you're coming or let us know. Uh, otherwise, sometime probably the pastor will have to go get him and we start church 20 minutes late or 30 minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> so please uh, just think about that. And I believe it will be a very good service to bring him to church and take him back after the, the service. Let's bow our heads together as we pray. Father, we thank you because you are a gracious God. You answer prayers. Your faithfulness endures forever. And Lord, apart from you, we cannot be here. But you are with us. You guide us. You take care of us. You speak to us. And Lord, whenever life seems to be too hard, when we come to you, at all times, you hear us. So, Lord, take the glory and honor even as we have come to worship. And together, as a household of faith, we are lifting uh, these people that we have mentioned that need um, healing. I pray that you visit them in a special way. And we thank you for those that we are seeing that uh, are already getting better. I pray that, Lord, you lift your name high and be honored for what you are doing. There are some people, oh God, that their names are not here and they are struggling with other things. Um, Lord, I know that victory comes from you. Whoever is struggling in one way or the other, may the power of Jesus Christ visit them and may your healing touch be with them wherever they need you. Thank you, Father, for this time. And we want to pray together for the peace of Europe, especially as this war is going on. We pray for brothers and sisters, some that have no idea of what is happening but have become victims, some that are leaving their homes, not even sure whether it's a one-way um, departure that they are making to their home and their livelihood. I pray that, Father, you intervene that in the midst of this, O oh God, that people will see the hand of God and you and you alone, O oh God, will be lifted high. Thank you so much for this time and thank you for hearing us and thank you for leading us in every way because we know that you are faithful. As we together as your household say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And thank you so much for praying. Last week we were in Ohio visiting our daughters. It was a wonderful time. Thank you so much. And thank you, Sally Wei for the wonderful message and all of you that uh, took part in the service. I think I need to be traveling more so that Sally can be preaching more. <laughs> yeah, I can hear the smile. So <laughs> thank you. <coughs> Life at the church ain't very laid back. The much an old preacher boy like me can't hack. I know my Bible from the front to the back. Thank God I'm a preacher boy. Well, the minister's life never did me no harm. I preach with conviction and encourage with charm. My people's prayers are like a shot in the arm. Thank God I'm a preacher boy. Well, I got me a fine church. I got me a Bible when the sun's coming up. I pray for revival. Seekers keep on coming down the aisle. 
Thank God I'm a preacher boy. When it's offering time, I pass around the plate. I love taking offerings, it's really great. At the potluck, I can't believe what I ate. Thank God I'm a preacher boy. I'd preach my sermons all day if I could, but the crowd and my wife wouldn't take it very good. So I preach what I can, let them go when I should. Thank God I'm a preacher boy. Well, I got me a Bible church, I got me a Bible When the sun's coming up, I pray for revival Seekers keep on coming down the aisle Thank God I'm a preacher boy Woo! Yeah, I marry their kids and I bury their dust And dedicate babies with a pat on the head Sunday afternoons, I go straight to bed Thank God I'm a preacher boy well, I wouldn't trade my life for diamonds or fame. I don't preach for money or preach for fame. I just preach Jesus and lift up his name. Thank God I'm a preacher boy. Well, I got me a fine church. I got me a Bible. When the sun's coming up, I pray for revival. Seekers keep on coming down the aisle. Thank God I'm a preacher boy. Well, some days are better and some days are worse. And some days I feel like I'm gonna need a nurse. If no one comes forward, we'll sing another verse. Thank God I'm a preacher boy. Well, I'm gonna preach the word till the day I die And then I'll go up to my mansion in the sky I'll preach some more in the sweet by and by Thank God I'm a preacher boy Well, I got me a fine church, I got me a Bible When the sun's coming up, I pray for revival Seekers keep on coming down the aisle Woo! Thank God I'm a preacher boy Yeah!
now invite the ushers forward so that we can pray for the offering and Let's bow our heads together as we pray. Lord, it's a joyful thing for us to respond to your goodness, to respond to your word that invites us to come before your presence with an offering. I pray, O oh God, that as we give this offering in response to the great things you are doing to us, bless us and help us to realize that we're doing this for the advancement of your kingdom and to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. have you remain standing for this next song it's going to be on the video so follow along if you're so inclined
You may be seated. Today's scripture reading is Acts 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And will the children please come forward for children's time? Okay, Acts um, 2, 1 to 4. Uh, lots of stuff comes to mind here, like speaking in tongues, Holy Spirit, disciples, apostles. All of these things are concepts in this last reading. The book of Acts is short for Acts of the Apostles. It's about the early church and how the early church came to be. And in this particular passage, the disciples are sitting around and there's uh, evidently a whole bunch of other people around. And the people are from many, many different countries, and they all speak their different languages and so forth. And so um, there's this, this big wind that happens, and these, uh, these flames of fire come and descend on the disciples. And then all of a sudden, the words that they speak can be understood by all, by everybody, either that or um, the language that they're speaking can be understood by everybody. Okay, so this is a big deal. A lot of people um, read this whole uh, passage a lot of big different ways and there are a lot of theologians who have studied this thing. Anybody know what a theologian is? A theologian is a person who has uh, received formal training in the study of the world's main religions okay, through the use of the scientific method, uh, the study of art, literature, archaeology, music, and uh, through peer-reviewed research. And we have theologians, real ones, here in this room. One of them is right over there. Gideon Achi, Reverend Gideon, or Reverend Achi, Pastor Gideon. Okay, he's a theologian. We have another one, Sally Barber, right back there. Can you raise your hand, please, Sally? Thank you. There's, so we have two theologians. These are people who know a lot about this stuff. And so, um, most of the theologians that I've read about say that the speaking in tongues part of this thing 
isn't as important as the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit entered the disciples and changed them. It turned them from followers of Jesus to, to being like Jesus. And this was the instant that that happened. And the Holy Spirit made it happen. And the Holy Spirit's kind of a tough concept. The Holy Spirit is kind of the way that we perceive God. It's the way that you can use your senses to understand God or to feel God. But in this case, the Holy Spirit just got into the apostles or got into the disciples and turned them into apostles. They were no longer followers of Jesus, but now they're like Jesus. That means they can go out into the world and they can preach. They can do some of the things that Jesus could do, like heal and many other wonderful things. But anyway, they went out and started spreading the word about Christianity. And that's what this is about. Um, any questions? I didn't think so. <laughs> and so the two things I want you to remember are, um, this is really important about the Holy Spirit, and it's important to pay attention to what theologians, real theologians, have to say about our religion, okay? Those guys on TV, I was watching TV this morning, clicking through, at least three or four different talking heads came up telling us what their opinion is about religion and about Christianity. Most of it is they want your money. And uh, that's not what real theologians do. Real theologians help us to understand ourselves and our God. We're finished. Thank you. Sorry about that. Gosh, you should have reminded me. Sorry. Okay. Um, thank you, Lord, for showing us the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray that you'll uh, give each of us opportunities to experience the Holy Spirit sometimes in our lives and let us feel and understand you. Amen. Okay, uh, let me just come up here and then we're going to say the Apostles Creed together. I think it's the next thing, right? Do you have it up, uh, Raina? Oh, special offering, nickels for the kids. Kids, you can come, the, the Nichols Project, this special mission Nichols Project. Just walk around and as, as as we get that slide up.
Thank you. Okay, now, the Apostles' Creed. Can we stand, please, if you're able? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the God Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's be seated. You know, we just said the Apostles' Creed, and if you look at the Apostles' Creed closely, you will notice that it is divided into three paragraphs. One actually talks about, I believe in God the Father Almighty. The second paragraph talks about, and in Jesus Christ, his Holy Son, our Lord. And then following that, quickly, it mentioned, I believe in the Holy Spirit. And every other thing there that follows came as a result of the power of the Holy Spirit. You may notice that the last two Sundays in Lent, we started with our belief in God, the Father. And last Sunday, we turned to our belief in and trust in Jesus Christ, which Sally did an excellent job preaching about it. Today, we are going to look at the work of the Holy Spirit. Don't forget that I mentioned at the beginning when we started this series on the Apostles' Creed that this historical uh, confession was used by the early church to prepare people for baptism. They will start preparing people, getting towards Easter, and when Easter comes, people are baptized into the household of God as Christians and people who have received Jesus Christ. You know, when we speak about the Holy Spirit, it is hard to conceptualize God as being the Holy Spirit. It is easier to think of God the Father who created the universe. And some of us actually, we think, okay, he's far removed, he's somewhere else. And it is also easier to think about Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, who came about 2,000 years ago. He lived, he was crucified, he died and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again. And after that, he ascended into heaven, and we believe that he's coming back again for his church. But wait a minute. When we talk of God, the Holy Spirit, doesn't it seem far removed from our understanding? When you talk about God the Father, God the Son, okay, we can link easily some things about that. But when we get to the Holy Spirit, it becomes a kind of fuzzy in our thinking as Christians. And I want to tell us that our lack of knowledge of who and what the Holy Spirit can do in our lives leaves us powerless as people who seek to lead their lives for God. You know, I found this pamphlet uh, which actually listed about 20 things. Regarding the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit does. So I have some copies back there. If you know, you would want to read. And these are all from the scripture. Very short things that tells you what the Holy Spirit does to you as a believer. Or does for you as a believer. So pick up a copy. Uh, Dave uh, will give us copies as we go out. So, but in addition to what is here. As a statement of faith, I will invite us to do a little exercise with me. 
And that exercise is not a very difficult one. Turn to either your right or your left. Look at the person that you are seeing. Look at them in the face and tell them, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Now turn around again. Say it the other way around. I believe the other people say it. I believe in the Holy Spirit. But I'm not hearing that. Do we actually believe in the Holy Spirit? If you do, please wave your hands. Let me see. Amen, church. Thank you. I can see our hands. We believe in the Holy Spirit. That is excellent. You see, what we have just done now, by stating that we believe in the Holy Spirit, that is a statement of faith that we trust in God, the Holy Spirit. And that we have confidence in his work in our lives. And now, because of that, I want to draw our attention to three things quickly. First thing is that the Holy Spirit is God. The second thing is that the Holy Spirit is actively involved in our lives. And the third thing is the Holy Spirit draws us to God. The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is actively involved in our lives. And the Holy Spirit draws us to God. Now, as we talk about the fact that the Holy Spirit is God, there is, there is a diagram that Renita is going to put on the board, I mean, on the screens. He is the third person of the Holy Spirit, uh, of, 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 of the Godhead. We have God the, Father, God the Father, God the Son, that's Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. This teaching is known as the Trinity, but it's not, that word Trinity is not mentioned in the Bible. But it is a very difficult teaching. Everyone, I have had lots of illustration in class and people preaching and people teaching None of the illustration is actually able to capture and really hold. But I just want to add to the confusion of that to see if we can understand. Right here, we have, we have a, a triangle. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. What is happening here is that God the Father is not God the Son, and God the Son is not God the Holy Spirit, and God the Holy Spirit is not God the Father. Does that confuse us yet? But this is the idea. God is one right here. God the Father, is, I mean, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. This is a teaching and a doctrine that when we get to heaven, I think for me, one of the things that when I appear before the throne of God is to look at how this thing works out and I'll say, Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I now understand. But once, I mean, as we are in the flesh, we have a limited understanding of what this is. But this is exactly what the scripture teaches us. That we serve one God who manifests himself in three persons. And they are actively involved in our lives. And our lives are what they are today as God's children because God is active and involved in, our, in, in all of what we do. The Bible describes the Holy Spirit in terms that tell us that he is God. Now, as we see this, now we have talked about God the Father. We talked last Sunday about God the Son. And now God the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about the Holy Spirit as God. This is not something that somebody created, but the Bible gives us that. The Holy Spirit is equal to the Father and the Son. If you look at when Jesus was leaving his disciples in Matthew 29, verse 19, Jesus commanded his followers to go and make disciples of all nations. And he said, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Let's say that together in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now they are together, individually, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. 
And he was saying, Jesus said, go and baptize them. This may sound confusing and it may want to blow some people's head off here, but let's just hang in there. You know, in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Apostle Paul referred to this three in one God when he was given this doxology, a teaching, a closing, kind of a closing prayer. He said, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So you can see that the Bible is giving us examples of how the Holy Spirit is equal to the Father and equal to the, um, the Son. And, and we can think about the Holy Spirit being God because he is involved. He was involved in creation. The Holy Spirit was present and active during the act of creating the entire universe. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible said the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. That is right from the beginning in Genesis 1 verse 2. You know, verse 1 said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And in verse 2 said, and the spirit of God was hovering above the waters. And in Job chapter 26, verse 13, the Bible said, by his spirit, he had garnished the heavens. So... You and I were not involved in creation, thank God. Because if somebody like me would have been involved in creation, give me a hammer, I would just break things. But maybe if you give Bob, he's going to construct something. But you ask Bob to create something else, maybe he'll say, uh, are you sure you want me to do that? But God created everything. And he said, and he looked and everything was beautiful, was good. So the Holy Spirit was involved in creation. You know, the Holy Spirit was not only involved in creation to show that he is God, but only God exists everywhere at the same time. And the Holy Spirit does that. In Psalm 139, David asked, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the down, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. There is nowhere you can be and hide from the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. You may hide from your spouse. You may hide from your children. You may hide from your pastor. But you cannot hide from the Holy Spirit because he is God and he is everywhere. This is possible because the Holy Spirit is not just a spirit, but he is the Holy Spirit who is God. The Holy Spirit actually helped in the conception of Jesus Christ. During Christmas, we read it. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And that's why he is God. And the Holy Spirit is God. So, if we are so fortunate to be the recipients of this gift of God, and when we say in the Apostles' Creed that I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and we now go down to say, I believe in the Holy Spirit. That shows that we are people who are very fortunate. Some religions don't understand this because they cannot fathom who God is. 
You know, I want to assure us that your life will be different when you truly believe and trust that the Holy Spirit is God. Who participated in creation. And you believe that the Holy Spirit is God. You will not be afraid because he is with you everywhere. Now, the Holy Spirit is actively involved in our lives. And one of those things that we know quickly is that he helps us. The Holy Spirit gives us power, I mean, that we need to live our lives as Christians. Believing in the Holy Spirit is believing in the eminent presence of God in our lives. When Jesus was about to leave his disciples, he said something to them. He said he was not going to leave them alone. He promised that he was going to ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit who will be with, his, with them forever. This is what he said in John 14, 16. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper who will never leave you. So the Holy Spirit is eminently present with us to help us. If you feel that you are incapacitated, that you are not able, Turn to the Holy Spirit and ask God, Lord, may the power of your Holy Spirit help me out here. This is not just head knowledge, but it's something that needs to transfer to the heart and it needs to transfer to our lives as we seek the power of the Holy Spirit to help us. This promise was fulfilled in our passage today. After Jesus ascended it, uh, to heaven, leaving the disciples, they came together on the day of Pentecost to worship. And we read in Acts chapter 2 that suddenly a mighty wind started blowing and they saw something settling. And that was the Holy Spirit. That was the ushering in of the Holy Spirit in the church. So the Holy Spirit now came to dwell among the believers, and he dwells in us. So he is there with us. He is everywhere with us to help us and to keep us going. So please, if you forget anything, remember that the Holy Spirit is God's eminent and abiding presence with his people. The Holy Spirit teaches us. And that's, that's, that's one very important thing. And you say, how do you know all these things? How, how, how can I be a Christian? How can I live? How can I overcome sin? How can I do this? The Holy Spirit teaches us when we go into God's word and read God's word, God takes that through the power of the Holy Spirit and translates it into our hearts, into our lives, so that we can live it out. We can be in obedience. We cannot obey God without the power of the Holy Spirit. Because man... For humanity, all of us, we are prone to rebellion. Tell me to go this way. I want to go that way to see what you would do. Isn't that how kids do to us? Even though they are laughing and joke, joking with you. Say, hey, come here, come here. They will start running away. That is the human nature. But the Holy Spirit takes God's word and translates it into action in our lives so that we can obey God. And that's how we can leave. leave. You know, this is what Jesus said in John 14, 26. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Jesus told us that the Holy Spirit will guide us. He will lead us. And he will help us to live our lives as Christians. Now, the, the third and last thing that I want to bring to our attention is that the Holy Spirit draws us to God. Today, we live in a world that is filled with many voices making spiritual claims and telling us that, you know, you can do this or do that or do this or do that. That is not what the Bible teaches us. You know, this happens when, when we're preparing for funerals sometime. Somebody will say that, well, he or she, their loved one, yes, he was spiritual. He was a spiritual person. Then I ask, oh, so did he believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? 
say, ah, not really. He did not really believe anything much, but he was very spiritual. That is actually an oxymoron or a contradiction of the fact. Because what the Bible tells us is that the, the Holy Spirit is going to invite us and draw us to God. If we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that is through the power of the Holy Spirit. So if we are spiritual, it's because we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit that draws us to Christ for salvation. Because today, the Spirit seems to be a Viking. People just talk about the Spirit. But they don't understand that the Spirit actually leads us back to God. Leads us and brings us to Jesus Christ, who is the only way to salvation. It's okay for somebody to believe nature. It's okay for somebody to believe everything. But if you, if you, you don't believe in Jesus Christ, the Bible says, for whosoever believes in him shall not perish. So, which means if we do not believe in him, then it means that there is something. We can come to church. We can do things. We can try to be good and be moral. But the Holy Spirit draws us to place faith in Jesus Christ. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. And he gives us that strength to be able to live our lives. You know, if you live your life as a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit. But just having the Holy Spirit is not enough. Because it's just like having a power tool without electricity to charge that power tool. You take that power tool, if it's a screwdriver... The best thing you can do with it is you put it there and start squeezing with your hand, and it doesn't help. But if you're connected with the Holy Spirit, that is the source of the power of God that leads us to live our lives. And when you press that thing, what do you call it? The one that you press in the power tool, the trigger or whatever. If you press the trigger, what happens? It just zooms and it screws that note, and it goes so fast. That is the power we can have in the Holy Spirit. That's the power we can have. So you find out that your Christian life is not lived out. You find out that you are struggling. You find out that you are trying to conform to Christ, but it's not working. The idea is come back. Go back to the source of that power. The Holy Spirit will give you power to be able to live your Christian life. And that's why, in conclusion, we are going to sing a hymn. I surrender. All to Jesus, I surrender. And just take note, the last verse is verse 3 that we're going to sing. Let's invite God to fill our hearts, our lives with the Holy Spirit. And our lives will be different. Please stand and join me in singing our closing song found on page 354. I surrender all. We'll sing verses one through three.
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide and be with us as we continue to live and shine the light of Jesus from now and forever. Amen. Thank you, David.